If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast as well with no minimum listenership, meaning that you can make money and monetize your work without having a million, or even a hundred thousand listeners. You can start right from zero. Lastly, everything you need to make a podcast is in one centralized location. It's all in one place. There are no excuses not to make a podcast. I know so many people who want to make a podcast and they just are scared of it. Anchor makes it so easy. Anchor removes all the reasons why you should not make a podcast and gives you countless reasons why you should. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, everybody. Today is episode seven of Existential, and today we talk about the difficulty in actually being a positive person, why it's so difficult to be positive. But uh, before we continue, I want to give a brief thanks to our sponsor. All right, so we're back. Today, we want to talk about the difficulty in being existentially positive, right? I'm not talking about positive in the face of certain things, right? I'm not talking about being positive when you put a smile on in the morning when you greet somebody or not even positive when you're doing something that, an activity that's inherently positive, like giving charity. I'm talking about positive in any situation, right? That your existent, the, the mood that you, of your entire reality, the bone, the backbone of your entire reality is purely positive. Right. And unfortunately, most people, you know, I hate to admit, it, but most people don't have this. Most people are uh, normal. They're, they're, they let the weight of the world kind of attack them. Right. As opposed to vice versa. Uh, that kind of goes to show that being that if we can kind of look almost like um, like a math equation or really like a logic equation, if letting the world if letting the world beat you up gives you or get pushes you down, and gives you negativity positivity conversely positivity can make you take down the entire world right it can give you the strength to take down the entire world right there's kind of studying opposites right coming back to a little bit of the last episode studying opposites if this gives me this that gives me that so i mean it, there are benefits to being positive right but you you would think with such power and being positivity there again the cost and benefit what is the cost right so again what does it take to really to genuinely be a the backbone of your reality to be positive um so i think it's a i think it's a mix right i, I definitely think it's a it's a mix of many reasons right and we'll we'll get into all of them but uh the the first initial one right the kind of the, the one that uh, spirals off into everything is the fact that you need to divorce yourself from reality. You cannot be involved in reality a 100% in order to be in order to be positive, in order to be positive 100%. Unfortunately, it's a, a fact of life, right? And I'm and I'm unsure of any other way one can be 100% involved in reality in a 100% positive way. And no one's 100% positive, but in an objectively normal positive way and still be involved in reality 100%. They, they just do not coincide with one another. They just don't work, unfortunately, right? Again, going back to a very simple analogy, really. If you put your hand in a fire, it will burn. If you associate yourself with a negative force, there will come an effect, right? So again, an association will equal effect, right? They always say, right, and I kind of had, had to learn this one the hard way. When people say, uh, when people say, for example, um, hmm, I, I, I should in social situations, right? When when people, uh, when people say, "Oh, don't ever bend for other people," right? You have the people who are kind of still figuring out the social the social uh, atmosphere, right? And they don't bend, right? They there's a kind of a rule to themselves: I will not be influenced. It's a very very tough rule, like like a think of a tree, right? It's a very in, in the face of anything, a tree will stay, right? Its roots are grounded; it will not move. It doesn't fluctuate. So you have those people who do not move. Their personality does not fluctuate. They make sure to stay one, and that's it. They don't kind of fluctuate. They don't kind of go up a little bit, a little bit down, right? Which is the healthy way, right? So unfortunately, right, that's what happens. You know, you 
but you know, conversely, when someone who uh, it gets influenced too much, right? They they also don't have control. But I'm talking about somebody who's very strict in terms of the demeanor they have toward uh, a, a social group, right? And uh, the problem that I'm noticing here, right, is even if even if you say you are 100% you, there is still room for influence. Always there is room for influence. Never think one is impervious or immune in any such fashion to social influence. Just as one can be inspired, again, inspiration and negative influence are one are under the same umbrella of influence around others, right? External influencing the internal, right? That, that can be negatively, right? So that's obviously you see that social influence, that that negative social influence, but you can also see that inspiration, right? You would think inspiration is not, not nothing at all, right? Inspiration is empowering, it's nice and everything, but it does show that even the people who claim to be super strong and super thing, right? Everyone gets influenced, right? So we can learn from here that no matter how positive you claim to be, if you're if you claim to be 100% positive, but you are still immersed in your reality 100%, you can still be influenced. Let's say your hand is covered in a a fireproof glove, and you stick it in fire, you will still feel heat. You putting the guard of positivity, you making the backbone of positivity your reality, right? Which would mean the glove in this in a, in this metaphor, right? Even if you still put that in the fire to kind of test it, it won't burn. But you will feel warmth. You will feel heat, right? Because no matter what, your your reality still rubs off on you. Now, you cannot, you know, you cannot be involved in a volatile reality, right? You, it's it's it, reality is too volatile. Reality is too positive, and it, it too much of a mix of positivity and negativity in order for you to stay uh, to stay one hundred percent anything right reality is is too in in many ways it's predictable but in many ways it's too unpredictable and we're going to see how kind of confidence in one's own self right a, a, a strong uh, uh like mental or psychological fiber really of of uh, people uh, of just mentally that you can see the world around you and not be afraid of uh not not have any mental walls protecting you from the world around you, how that can actually help with the positivity, right? Because you aren't scared, right? There, there isn't, you can actually be involved out of reality. You can be kind of a passerby in reality because you understand that not much, you're unscared of much. Anyway, that's a little bit, of, that's a little bit going off the point, right? But the point being is that the human being, right, cannot be involved 100% in one mindset when the reality around him fluctuates always that that's something you know you can hear about an amazing thing one day and then tomorrow there can be a shooting god forbid and this volatility right this volatility if you're at all if the goal is being healthy at all the volatility cannot right there has to be a balance there has to be some degree of balance uh, but before we continue with our next point here, I want to give another thing. Uh, thank you to our sponsor. Okay, so we're back. Um, so we we kind of uh, left off with talking about how uh, you cannot, how that one person cannot live in one area one hundred. You cannot be one hundred percent positive in a world of mixed negativity and positivity, uh, in a world that kind of fluctuates no less. Yeah, that's unpredictable, no less really. Um, so to kind of even scratch the surface of making your backbone positive, right? What you live reality in, the way you as a human being, the way you as your consciousness, the internal and interprets the external, right? They do say it's all about your mindset, right? And a lot of what I'm saying right now is very cliche, but in a way it, I'm trying to really redefine and, and restructure it. So just to kind of remind you that it, it is actually true, you know, uh, reality you and reality must be two different entities, right? The backbone that you live your life on, right? The the way you mentally look at the outside is highly dependent on your backbone, right? What is the mental backbone? So you and reality must be two different entities. It is a very, very simple idea. You, your consciousness, and your reality externally, right? The reality around you that is... uh 
not limited to your work, your your school life if you're in it, your work, your relationships, your family, your uh, everything, right? Everything in reality has to be somewhat separated, right? I was reading a book by uh, Lao Tzu, right? A a Chinese uh, philosopher, and he and he he's very he's very into. Uh, simple proverbs, right? And you'll kind of see this. I was reading a Tao Te Ching the other day, and he was speaking simply about how living in the outside involves you in the inside, right? It's a very cryptic language, right? So, you know, even reading it a few times, you still don't really grasp it that much. Uh, but nonetheless, he talks about how being outside can help you in the inside. Well, this is a perfect example. Being outside internally, right? When you're outside of, when you're outside of reality, you're somewhat inside reality as well, but you're pass you're looking at it without any what I mean is that you're not completely like in a coma right you're you're interpreting you're looking around and you're interpreting the reality but without any attachment you know you see a pen and the pen or you see a color and it brings about certain feelings right divorcing yourself from reality doesn't mean not looking at the pen right or not looking at the color it means looking at the color and not having any feeling attached to it that is divorcing one's own self from reality right just to kind of clarify that point but what i mean by two different entities is that again going back external circumstances are positive and negative they are a very solid mix and unpredictable an unpredictable mix you if you are 100% positive, there is no way that the negativity from the external circumstances will boil over and affect you in some way, right? The goal at hand is not, again, to reiterate, the goal at hand is not to remove one's own self from his or her reality, right? In other words, don't when I say divorce, right? Like, for example, literally the word divorce, right? Divorce with kids, right? It's, I'm using it in a very poetic way, but I'm talking about but even in the actual example of the word divorce, right? That's a divorce, right? The parents are divorced and they have kids. So when you're talking, when you're divorced, uh, if you aren't uh, romantically or no, forget romantically. You are not involved with the, with your, with the, with the ex-partner in a, any emotional fashion, right? There is no emotional connection, but there is understanding, right? You are talking, I am interpreting. You are talking, I'm interpreting. But there is no feeling going on. In the same way, right? Divorcing one step from reality means to just look at it, right? You can allow yourself to feel, but you have to look at it like a divor like two divorcees speak with one another. Without feeling, but yet interpreting their realities, right? Interpreting the other person's words without feeling. This is literally what it means to divorce one's own self from reality. And through this kind of sociopathic uh, fashion, or kind of this kind of the, uh, a therapist's ego, uh, kind of the nonchalant demeanor of a therapist, right? When you kind of interpret reality in this way, you can begin to build yourself and build the backbone a positive backbone from the ground up right because i mean because there is no because you remove the instinct your mind's instinct to look and associate feelings right and we've and by the way we've been conditioned to that to do to look at something and then interpret it right i see a new person and then I meet that new person, and then there come feelings attached to that person, obviously, right? So this entire activity is geared toward removing the feeling and emotion, the analytical emotion. I'm not talking about the actual friendship emotion. I'm talking about, like, the analytical emotion, right? And uh, when, you, when one removes this, then you can start retraining your mind to see only the positive, right? You, to, to, to look at... Uh, one's own reality favorably, right? You can you go from interpreting everything with a feeling to not interpreting everything uh, with any feeling, just kind of looking at it and passing by like one can do in, in just basic meditation. And then from there, you can refill the cup again by looking at everything and conditioning yourself to look at the positive in within that within that structure. So why, right? So we've listed why these uh why becoming positive is so difficult you know 
this is a jump, right? For someone to do it, it would be a jump. It would be a mind or a reality altering jump from the way one lived anyone's life. So any pretty much anybody who can understand a topic like uh, like what I'm talking about, right, is has lived in reality long enough to develop this instinct and it would be super unraveling and very, very unsettling to uh, completely undermine one's own way you, you understand reality. <coughs> Excuse me, to under, completely undermine one's own reality to restructure it to become more positive, right? So it's a very powerful and unknown terrain. Emphasis on the unknown. It's an unknown terrain. When you are completely, I mean, you understand the goal at hand, but it is unknown terrain. You know, people have lives. People, the world does not work in this way. Everyone, everyone's mood fluctuates, you know? And I, oh, but you kind of can give me the in reality, unfortunately, blah, 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 I have certain circumstances that don't permit me to act as follows. So, I mean, you know, so in many ways, it, it is a jump. It's a very big jump. And people don't, people really, they have a difficult time. They have a difficult time even doing it, right? I mean, to learn new things, you have to spill out the pre to To fill a full cup of water with apple juice you have to spill out the water, then fill it with apple juice. You cannot fill a full cup of water with more liquid. It just does not make sense. Same thing by learning. When you learn something new, you need to spill out what pre-exists. You have to spill out the pre-existing notions and replace the notions with what you're redoing, right? So that's what I mean when I say to remove, uh, to re to take, when I, you take out the water, you take out the activity of associating uh, objects with emotions. Once the cup is empty, that means you're looking at everything with no emotion. When you refill the cup with apple juice, you are looking at everything in a positive way, right? It's three steps. You remove, you exist, you recondition, and your mind will adjust. And, you know, you spill, you, uh, spill out the water, you exist, you refill the cup with a different liquid. But the cup cannot be filled with a different liquid if the cup is full. So, you know, this it's a very, very uh, difficult jump for many people to make. Uh, people are also, and we'll explore later, that there is actually a comfort in sadness and a comfort in negativity. But before we go there, uh, I want to give another brief thanks to our sponsor. All right, so we're back. So we, we left off by saying how it's a very difficult jump. Uh, for, because people their entire lives have been conditioned to fluctuation to being in tune with reality and i see something i interpret it and i interpret it with emotion right so it's a it's a lifelong conditioning process and it's a big jump to re to empty out the cup refill the cup with a different with a different uh, liquid so when i mention in tune there when i when someone says they're in tune with reality right it is it it's it's a good thing to be in tune with reality. It's very healthy. But in the context I'm speaking about, you know, it is difficult for people to be in tune with reality and to be positive. Because if one is truly what does it mean in to be in tune with reality? If one is truly in tune with reality, then he or she would you know would have to interpret the positive and the negative. The positive and the negative are part of reality and if one wants to be in tune with that reality they would have to interpret it fully right they have to take it for what it is you know when you're when you're uh when you're looking there's no coin that's one-sided right everything it, you have to when you pick up a dime a dime has the front side and has the back side right you can't choose what side you want you get the coin you have to take it for what it is what reality is is a mix of positive and negative so when you're in tune, unfortunately, with positivity, you cannot be in tune in many ways. You cannot be in tune with reality because that requires you to understand uh, positivity and negativity in, uh, in, a, in, in the normal way, right? To, to understand positivity and negativity and for you to feel the positivity and negativity of reality, right? And really you know your positive your positivity if your reality is positive then you feel positive if your reality is negative then you feel negative right it's a very simple it's a very simple type of a very simple idea you're if 
your surroundings are happy, you're happy, your surroundings are negative, you are negative. And that's great, right? It's great to be in tune with reality. It's great to understand everything is right. It's, it's all it's all great, right? Until things become negative. Until until you hear about a, a bad thing that happened to you or about about, you know, bad circumstances. It's great to be in tune with reality. And uh, you know, negativity, but you have we have to remind ourselves that negativity, just like happiness, is an emotion. Negativity is an emotion. And you know, denying this emotion and this suppressing the denying this emotion would be really a suppression of one's own emotions. Right? And that's not good. Right? Negativity is the suppression right it would it would be suppressing emotions. That's you know, you would kind of get this 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 unwanted feeling, right? It's a very it's kind of a, a very annoying feeling that when you're trying to express something, right? Let's say someone pushes you on the road and deep down you don't believe it's ethical to curse back at him, right? But you go and curse back at him. He's like, oh, F you, right? You drive home that day, right? Nothing happens, but you're kind of wrestling within your head. Hey, you know, yeah, oh, he deserved it. No, he didn't deserve it. Oh, you know, I should have reacted that way or I shouldn't have reacted that way, right? So it's the full emotion that when until you express the full emotion for what it is, your mind will not feel satisfied. So... Like happiness, it's a suppression of emotions, and reality will not feel one hundred percent correct. It'll feel like there's a there's a gaping hole in reality when you don't answer uh, when when you really don't when you don't engage with it in the full in the, in the fullest way. And there also there is also a very practical aspect to this. How bad are your circumstances? You know, of course everything is relative, but how bad are your circumstances? Is your sac- are you it, how bad your circumstances are is a one-to-one correlation with how easy it will be to uh, to become a positive person, to become a positive, uh, to how easy this entire process will be. So, you know, it's all, in a way, it is all relative. But there is comfort in sadness, as, you know, we're going to talk about now that there is comfort in sadness. There is a specific comfort and consolation in sadness, and that comes from a control of your reality, right? When you are, that's a very scary and unknown feeling, right? It's very, it's a very, uh, you feel when ambiguity or being unaware is a very scary emotion, right? When you close your eyes, if you're standing in the street, if you're standing on the sidewalk, just looking out with your eyes open, nothing's scary, but if you close your eyes, you immediately feel on guard and scared, right? So an unaware, you being unaware of your own reality is a very, very scary thing. Now, when you have full control of your reality, when you know the full circumstance, there is a certain satisfaction in that, right? When you know the entire business deal, when you, no, if, you, if you're studying a, a story from A to B, right, from the past, if you're studying a story from the past from A to B, there's a certain satisfaction in knowing the entire story, how it played out, right? But right now, if you kind of uh, uh, tune back to the present, you'll see that it's sometimes difficult not knowing what the future is going to be like, right? That's kind of where anxiety starts coming in. So there is a comfort in sadness and there's a comfort in knowing 100% of your reality, 100% awareness. There is I repeat, there is consolation in knowing the negativity. There's consolation in knowing the positivity. But there is an even bigger existential consolation in knowing the full reality in its entirety. So this kind of... and So, so by the way, knowing, uh, going back to the negativity being an emotion, right? No, uh, be, uh, knowing in... Of being consoled by the fact that you know your reality 100%, there's 100% awareness, contributes to the idea that knowing 100% of your reality means knowing 100% of your reality, negativity and positivity. So by this literal definition, right, so being in tune with your circumstances, being aware of your circumstances to the fullest 100% degree cannot be 100% positive, right? It's only with this restructuring process, it's only with emptying the cup and refilling the cup can you restructure your mind to start looking at your mind, to start looking at the world 100% positively because everything in, in a way does have its positive, 
right? But it's only with this restructuring process that you can be consoled that you are living in reality and you know your reality 100% and still remain positive. And with that, we are going to close. So thank you very much for listening. All your support helps. Be sure to tune in daily for new episodes of Existential.